Here at Sold Out Chicago Stadium, the starting lineups for Game 3. Mark McGuire, Rick Mahorn, Bill Lane Beer, Isaiah Thomas, and Joe Dumars, the Piston starters, Scotty Pippen, Horace Grant, Bill Cartwright, Michael Jordan, and Craig Hodges for the Chicago Bulls. A year ago, the Bulls split with Detroit in Detroit in the first two games, only to see the Pistons come and win both games in Chicago and ultimately win the series in five. That was in an Eastern semifinal. It was a year ago. Doesn't mean anything now, except players from both teams have been talking about it. Underway, controlled by Detroit. Jack Madden, Ed T. Rush, and Bill Oaks are the officials working this afternoon. Well, Detroit's going to try to get uh, Joe Dumars off early here. And he does, Joe Dumars. And before the game, Isaiah Thomas said, what about Mark McGuire? Maybe we should go to that weapon as well. But now the Bulls with the ball. The point guard is Michael Jordan. All eyes on Scotty Pippen, guarded by Aguirre. Green. Jordan ties the score on a tip-in. The offensive rebounding of both teams have been very, very big in this series so far because the initial shooting is down. Only one team has scored 100 points. The Pistons got that many, winning game two. Lane Beer with a pump and a hit inside the three-point line. The matchup's important. Dumars is guarding Jordan. It's a tough assignment, and it's taken something away from Dumars' offense. He has spent so, so much time worrying about Mike. Hardright. Foul. Not a shooting situation, but the first foul of the game, and it's on Rick Mahorn. Well, Rick Mahorn thought that he had a piece of the ball that time, Dick. We'll see the Chicago Bulls going in early, down inside to Grant, and into... Uh, Billy Cartwright plus the posting of Michael Jordan. Scotty Pippen says he feels a little pain when he runs. Jordan, the rebound by Aguirre. Neither team is a real fast-breaking ball club, so we're going to see an awful lot of half-court basketball. Facing the hoop, Rick Mahorn hits the jumper. Mahorn led the Pistons in a losing cause with 17 in the opening game and then scored only one point in game two. Normally he explodes after an off game like he had the other day. Grant posting up against Lane Beer. Eight on the shot clock. Grant. Rebound by Mahorn. Six to two Detroit. They have the ball and nearly two minutes gone by in the opening period. Double team on Aguirre. Mahorn finds Lane Beer, who's fouled. Well, in the early going, we're seeing an awful no, lot of mismatches because teams are switching and guys are getting caught out of position. What I like early for both coaches is that the players are seeing the mismatch and trying to get the ball to the, to the man. Making the block from behind was Scotty Pippen, who committed the foul. Well, let me tell you, he flew in from the mezzanine on that one. Pippen loses the ball, and the oh, dribble call against Scotty. So they're going to test Scotty. The Pistons are going to go at him and attack him and see how his injured foot is. Well, he looks the... good right here, Dick. How about that block and the save out of bounds? He's looking good off the dribble right now. A little spring to his step. Besides being the second leading scorer for the Bulls in the playoffs, they need his defense. No in shot. this ball game, Dick, we have an awful lot of pick and rolls. That will be no, happening. No, 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 and what must be today is the man that sets the pick cannot be moving because they will call it early. Foul is on Cartwright. Second foul against Chicago. Just about two and a half minutes elapsed in the opening period of game three. Series is all even one apiece. Mahorn in good position. And here comes Chicago. If anyone will run in this game, it would be the Bulls if they can get out quick enough. Here's Pippen. Way off the mark. And now Thomas. As Hodges to keep and is called for the offensive foul. Craig Hodges set position in cement and Thomas ran right into it. You'll see in this possession as Isaiah comes down, I think he should have given this one up early because we had another player in that outside lane and they would have had the layup. It is still 6-2 to two Detroit, Hubie, and we have gone a couple of minutes without any scoring by either side. Well, we have two great defensive teams here, Dick, and they're going to take you out of your initial set. Grant guarded by Lane Beer. Jordan gets a tough pass in a crowd, and Michael gets his second basket of the game. 
He was frisky as a colt in practice yesterday. The Bulls were very loose. The Pistons, though, they had an intense battle-scarred practice before they got into town. The Horn inside. And it's 8-4 to four in favor of Detroit with 8.35 to go opening period. The Bulls need Pippen to be able to explode off the dribble because Doug Collins feels that Pippen can take advantage of Aguirre's slowness with the feet and take advantage to cause mismatches. Pippen ducks in. Scotty Pippen with his first basket and Chuck Daly who had to curtail practice this week because it was that intense. Pistons may be breaking out of their lethargy though. Mahorn going up as foul before the shot. That'll be Craig Hodges' his first foul and the 13th foul against the Bulls. And very important for the Bulls to keep Hodges out of foul trouble. Well, he keeps getting mixed up and he's he keeps picking up Aguirre every time Chicago scores. And they're posting Aguirre immediately. Aguirre misses, but Mahorn gets the offensive rebound. The extra pass by Thomas pays off. And Mark Aguirre... Gives the Pistons a 10-6 lead, just under eight minutes to go in the first period. Games three and four this afternoon and Monday afternoon. Right now, the Bulls have a home court edge. And they'll call Mahorn inside for a pushing foul and a technical foul as well. <laughs> it didn't take long. See, that time the Chicago Bulls ran a little, a little exchange down below. There's Chuck Daly frustrated. Forcing Detroit to switch, and you'll see it here. Grant goes on the baseline. Mahorn picks up Cartwright, and now they're going to post up Cartwright on Mahorn. Now, because of the size factor, you'll see Mahorn pushing him in the lower back. Technical foul and a personal against Mahorn. Jordan makes the free throw, and Rick Mahorn will go to the bench, and John Sally will replace him. That'll give the Pistons a good leaper, a guy who can run the floor, and a fine shot blocker. While Sally's leading their ball club in the playoffs with 14 blocks, he's playing exciting basketball and averaging double figures. Hodges guarded by Thomas like a blanket. 10-7 Detroit. Here's Jordan. Basket counts and a foul. And he'll be if Michael Jordan had an off game, if you can call a 27-point game off in game two, he looks like he's sharp here. Well, you notice how Dumars puts his hands on, on uh, Michael right at the beginning. But once Michael decides that he's taking it off the dribble to the basket, there is not a player in this league that can stop him. Missed a chance to tie it up for the Bulls. Jordan, though, has seven of Chicago's nine. The foul was on Sally. Each team with three team fouls in the opening quarter. Off the screen is Dumars. Jordan had him. Sally low to Aguirre. Double team. Good move Mark by Mark McGuire. McGuire. He showed that low post move. Not as much of a low post guy as Dantley was, who was traded to Dallas, but he's got some moves down low. Five minutes gone by, opening period. A spirited first quarter here at Chicago Stadium. Jordan misses a chance to bring the Bulls to within one. Here's Aguirre. He'll take a three, and he's got it. Mark McGuire who now has seven points tied with Jordan for the game lead. Well, the one thing you must do is get up on top of Aguirre because he's not only a three-point threat in transition, he's also a three-point threat when he takes the ball out of bounds. So they have gone to Aguirre. Their meal ticket on offense, and the lead is six. Sometimes teams play cat and mouse and miss the obvious, and Isaiah Thomas told Hubie Brown what he thinks the obvious should be in this game. The thing that's going through my head today coming into this game is that we got to get Aguirre more shots and we got to get him more involved in offense as opposed to everything feeding from me today. Uh, I like to have everything start with him uh, and we feed off of him. I, I think he has to be the focal point of our offense uh, in order for us to get better shots. Well, on this replay, you can see that that any time that Craig Hodges is playing Aguirre, he keeps getting caught behind him. There's a size factor, plus Aguirre can just shoot over the top. Aguirre is three for four, including a three-point basket and a 15-9 Detroit lead. Hodges looking inside to Cartwright, guarded by Sally. Cartwright with the familiar baseline turnaround. Cartwright has not had big scoring games thus far. 
But you know he'll be a factor sooner or later in this series. Grant defenses Aguirre well, and Thomas hits the shot. He was practically wide open. Quickly down court, the Bulls. Halfway through this opening stanza, Pistons by six. They had the best road record in the NBA this year, so they know what it's like to play in enemy confines. Jordan gets bumped and a foul. And that'll be the 14th foul against Detroit. Quickly to Pat O'Brien. Pat? The foul is on Joe Dumars, his first. You know, Michael Jordan may have seven of the 11 points, but the happiest guy on the Bulls bench is Scotty Pippen, who says he can feel his toe, but it's not bothering me. He says, Pat, I'll be okay. Let's go back to you, Dick. All right, Pat. Dumars picks up his first foul, and the next foul by the Pistons will put him in the penalty. Bulls still have one foul to give. 5.45 to go in the first period, and a kick ball by Isaiah, and a new 24-second clock. You know, Dick, I'm kind of surprised that the Chicago Bulls have not gotten the ball to Grant at the foul line area and allowed him to take Lambier off the dribble because Grant feels that he can take him there because of the quickness factor. He has been a puzzle for Chuck Daly. No question about it. Good pass to Cartwright from Grant. Couldn't get the basket and couldn't control the rebound, but the pass was perfect. Perfect pass. You've got to make those. You've got to get the gimmies in a game like this. Sally in the low post. Cartwright leaves his feet, God and Sally goes around him. And the Pistons have hit their last five shots. This for a team that has not been known for their offense lately. That's the new John Sally. Dunk everything. Hodges misses a shot. Isaiah Thomas is down court. The Pistons missed him, but they didn't miss Sally. Sally, I thought, was pushed by the Bulls. No foul. Open is Pippen in the corner. And the rebound by Aguirre. So Chicago really struggling on the offensive end. Well, they're getting an awful lot of easy opportunities, Dick. And when you know that the game is going to be 100 to 105, you must take advantage of these. Detroit is on a 9 to 2 run, leading by 8 points. Dumars misses. Rebound Jordan. He outjumped the world on that one. Gets by Dumars and lays it in. And that's against one of the better defenders in the NBA. Well, he's, uh, you know, on the first team all defensive team. Uh, let's face it, there's no one guy who can take him off the dribble. You need that quick double team. Winding down the four minutes remaining in the opening period, Aguirre tries to go baseline and Grand fouls him. That is the fourth team foul, so both teams with four, and Grant with his first. See, as I'm looking at this game, I, if I'm Chuck Daly, I'm very happy. My ball club is recognizing mismatches. This is the first time that Aguirre's been covered down in low by a big player. And that was Grant at 6'10". He's still on him, and he's still isolated on him. Nearly a steal by Pippen, and Lambeer open in the corner misses. Now we have under four minutes to go, first period, and the Pistons have led virtually all the way, and have led all the way, in fact. They're up by six, and Jordan gets by. The Pistons are not doubling quick enough on Jordan, and he's getting a lot of easy layups. And the reason for that is because Cartwright is in low, and they do not want his man to double because Cartwright will get the easy dump. Aguirre again against Grant. Rebound, Cartwright. And a chance for the Bulls to come within a pair. See, with Grant on top of Aguirre, every time he shoots that jumper, it's a fadeaway. And a reverse layup by Grant. Chicago has scored six in a row now. And with three minutes to go in the first period, it's 1917. This place is deafening. Great atmosphere. With the clock down, watch the guard penetration. Dumars, his foul going to the hoop. The Bulls are in the penalty, and Joe will shoot a pair at the line. See, this is a tough cover right here for Dumars. There's a, a pick that he has to worry about, and then once Michael decides to step through, you know the extension is there and the possibility of the foul. As we said at the outset, you can't even get obstructed view for this. Chicago, one of the great sports towns in America. The Cubs are doing very well. The Blackhawks did well. And Scotty, uh, I should say, Doug Collins told us yesterday this has been so great for the town to see the Bulls do extremely well. How about like what Doug said about this building? Here's Charles Davis 
a mini enforcer here for the Chicago Bulls. Well, he is in for Horace Grant, who goes out with two personal fouls. Dumars misses the free throw. There is Grant, and Grant got into foul trouble in the first game of the series. Came back with 20 rebounds in game number two. The Bulls need his rebounding, no question. Whenever Cartwright and Grant have a good ball game, that's when the Bulls seem to play well. Right now, Detroit is in a 2-2-1, three-quarter court press. Hodges in the corner. Jordan weaves his way for another basket. He has 13 points here in the first quarter, and the Bulls trail by one. I want to tell you something. He was so high on that shot, he shot down at the basket. Pippen on the switch has Thomas now. That means Jordan is guarding Lane Beer, and Lane Beer wants to post him up with a big height advantage. Yeah, but we know that's not Lane Beer's game. Sally John with the jump shot. 22 to 19, nearing two minutes remaining in the opening period. The Jordan, the point guard, he's got Hodges, Charles Davis, who does not back down. He's about as physical as they have off the bench. And it's off the screen. Davis gets a garbage basket in the right place at the right time. In the three games now, you have to be conscious that uh, there'll be a lot of missed first shots, but the team that's been winning the offensive boards have been winning the games. And Dennis Rodman is coming the ball game on a feed from Isaiah Thomas. So let's check the Pistons. They have Rodman and Sally in there, along with three starters, Dumars, Thomas, and Lane Beer. Cartwright, foul. And a very quick pass by Scotty Pippen. Got rid of it in all. Well, you can see that's all by design, Dick. They know that once that ball goes in there, they're going to be double teamed. You can count on it. And they're looking to the other side of the floor for the easy shot. Now there is Vinnie Johnson in for Detroit. Craig Hodges leaves for Chicago, replaced by John Paxson. And Chuck Daly has a very lucrative bench, to say the least, and James Edwards. The backup center, who has good offensive capabilities, will enter the game as well. Cartwright hits the free throw. Here's Edwards, who Chuck Daly told us last night. He says, I think I need to play him more because of his ability to score points. Well, let's face it, over uh, an 11-year uh, career, James Edwards has been able to average double figures every season. This is the first year that that has not happened. He's a quality low-post player. Cartwright with the free throws. 24 to 23 Detroit. They have led all the way in this quarter, and they're Aguirre with seven who leads Detroit getting a rest right now. Well, it's a difficult thing for Chuck Daly when you have Aguirre and Rod in that position. Ball batted away by Jordan. He knocked it away from Thomas. Here he is in the open floor. Davis. Charles Davis has already given Doug Collins a dividend off the bench, and Chuck Daly's Pistons now trail by one. Chicago has its first lead. Under a minute to go in the first period. And Vinny Johnson puts Detroit up again in a hurry and gets the foul as well. The foul, John Maxson, his first penalty. You'll see the penetration by Isaiah. Now watch Jordan strip him right there on the way up. At the offensive end of the floor for the Bulls. Three players in this game made the first all-defensive team in the NBA. Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan, and Joe Dumars. And by the way, if you were Michael Jordan, Dumars and Rodman are going to be guarding you for the That's 48 right. minutes. That's exactly right. <laughs> so I would say that you have to uh, gear up a little bit for that. And he may be doing the, just that. Corzine is coming the game. And a good rebound by Vinnie Johnson. Detroit by two. Half a minute remaining. And what? Wow. Sally lost the ball out of bounds. So Chicago has it trailing by two. But Rodman and Sally, that great dimension they give the Pistons off the bench. Well, that's, this is their best offensive rebounding group. And remember, Dennis Rodman is one of the few people in this league with 300 offensive boards during the course of the season. Scotty Pippen goes out, played practically the entire first quarter, so he may be feeling all right. Mark File, the trainer, is over there with him, and Craig Hodges has re-entered the game. 13 on the shot clock, a differential of four seconds between the game clock you see and the shot clock. Dennis Rodman tries to watch Jordan going to his left. Three-point attempt. 
Oh, it's a two, a two-point basket by Davis, but that's the second one he's hit from the corner. What a bonus. And with four seconds to go, Michael Jordan is called for a blocking foul as the Bulls try to trap Detroit at midcourt. Well, Michael didn't like that call because he anticipated and jumped into the lane and took away the sideline from Isaiah that time. But the referee, Billy Oaks, right on top of the call. There's Sam Vincent, who really is the odd man out in the Bulls' backcourt story. Isaiah Thomas has only two points, but has a six assists in this first quarter. And Jordan is going, let's see, Corzine goes out, and Vincent comes in. Well, that gives them another guard here. They move right. Michael Jordan to small forward, and they have Vincent and Hodges in here. The reason, because there's four seconds on the clock, and they have four perimeter shooters. Breaks the tie, Detroit by one. Final seconds in the first quarter, Jordan. And that'll do it. You can't ask for a closer one. And relatively high scoring first quarter, we might add. 28 to 27, the Pistons over the Bulls after one. Welcome back to the Madhouse on Madison, where a close basketball game, the Pistons lead the Bulls 28 to 27 as our coverage of the 1989 NBA playoffs continue. Pat O'Brien here behind the Detroit bench. What Chuck Daly is worried about now is the penetration of Michael Jordan. He's telling all his players, go at him. Stop that penetration. By the way, Horace Grant went to the locker room. I'll go there to check on that right now. Let's go back to Dick. You know, Michael Jordan is always the object of everyone now. He attended that five-star camp that has been a very popular camp for youngsters. Well, when he was in a, a rising senior, he was really relatively unknown, except for down in the Wilmington, North Carolina area. Uh, Roy Williams sent him up to that camp, yeah, who later recruited him for North Carolina. And the very first day he was there, he said, the competition was so fierce, my palms and my hands were sweating. And then what happened? All he did was win MVP in the first week. <laughs> Dave Corzine hits the shot. That's a great story because now everyone else's palms sweat who have to guard him. You know, he was only 6'3 and a half, so out there, you little guys, you can always grow once you go to school. Vinny Johnson out there along with Dumars. Isaiah Thomas starts the second quarter on the bench. And Rick Mahorn is fouled going to the hoop. James Edwards also in there along with Dennis Rodman. So Dumars is the only starter for Detroit out there now. Personal foul is on Davis as first. See, Rick Mahorn can really post up on Charles Davis. Charles has given away a lot of size and a lot of beef. Mahorn in his early days was not a good foul shooter. He's really developed his game and has come a long way on the foul line. As you saw, Michael Jordan gets a rest as we start the second quarter. He had led with 13 points. Well, that figures. That's why <laughs> That's right. I blew a little smoke. <laughs> Consequently, he missed the Newby. shot. Newby happens all the time. All the time. Marzine setting a screen for Sam Vincent. Edwards the rebound. Bulls have most of their reserves in as well. Scotty Pippen is the only starter in there for Chicago. And they're going to jump it up. Scotty Pippen tied up Vinnie Johnson nicely. This is one of the rare times that both Chuck Daly and Doug Collins have most of the bench in at the same time. Well, what do they say? Uh, the uh, Piston bench is personality, the SWAT team, the X Factor group. That's right. But, but the uh, Chicago Bull bench is the J Factor. And I said, what's that? They said, the journeyman factor. Oh, that's not bad. It, except they just don't get the minutes that the Detroit Piston bench gets. 23% perimeter shooting by Chicago. The fact that they're tied in the game, that's a good sign for them. Paxson is guarding Dumars. Mahorn lost the ball to Vincent. We're in the opening minutes of the second quarter. Dick Stockton and Hubie Brown along with Pat O'Brien. Game three of our series, all even in one apiece. Vincent dishes off and Pippen. Davis is fouled by Mahorn who picks up his third personal foul, three on Rick. See, I, I like what's going on here. Mahorn is upset, but Charlie Davis beat him to the glass that time for that offensive board. John Sally will send Mahorn to the bench with three personal fouls.
Grant is now back from the dressing room and is over there on the Chicago bench talking to trainer Mark File. Paxson. Shot! And the Bulls lead by a bucket. 31-29 and how his confidence has improved in the playoffs on the outside. The second unit, Dick, is basically a perimeter shooting team for the Bulls. But they're more than holding their own right now against Detroit's backups. Vinnie Johnson he penetrates. Corzine into the hands now of Davis. Boy, Charles Davis is very active so far in this game. Well, he says, listen, Yubi, when they put me in this game, I know what my job is, and that is to play big. I'll sacrifice my body. What I'm worrying about is these young guys that they don't understand how close we are to a major happening. Vincent, not that time. Sally the rebound, and you are so right. Because the Bulls continue to defy the experts who thought they would get swept against Cleveland, lose to New York, and here they are, even with Detroit. You notice what we said, a lot of pick and rolling. And a foul. Vincent and Davis were blocking out on Dumars, and the foul was against Davis. Let's go to Pat O'Brien. All right, Dick, thank you very much. If the Bulls didn't have enough to worry about, now they may have a flu epidemic on their team. I'm not kidding. Jordan and Cartwright had the flu last week. Horace Grant left earlier. He was, I don't know how to put it, very, very sick. He's back on the bench, and their leading rebounder goes out with that kind of an illness. Now you know why everybody in the team is saying, how you doing, how you doing? We'll be back at the Madhouse on Madison 31-29, back after this. We're back here in Chicago with the Bulls leading the Pistons 31-29, but how about those Lakers who now have won 10 straight playoff games and 15 consecutive games dating back to regular season. James Worthy out of sight in the playoffs, and the Lakers are within one game of sweeping the Phoenix Suns, and game number four tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern time from Phoenix. Isaiah Thomas back in the game. He has scored three points. McGuire still leads Detroit with seven, although he's on the bench right now. Corzine guarding Edwards, doubled with Davis. Wide open for three is Vinnie Johnson. And if he gets cooking, Detroit has a big weapon out there. Yeah, see, that's, that's really almost out of his range. Now, I know he made that one, but, you know, they'll give him that shot. He likes to get into 15 to 17 feet. Detroit by one. Pippen in the corner. Vincent. Davis. Open. Short. And Sally with the rebound. So Detroit with a one-point lead, just under nine minutes remaining in the second quarter. Johnson may be hot. Rodman tips it in. That's only the second offensive rebound by the Pistons in this game. The Bulls have done a good job there. They've also not turned it over much. One time. Now with Rodman and Sally, they really put pressure on your defense. You must get a part of their body. Bulls trying to be patient now with 10 on the shot clock. Vincent slides in and travels. Michael Jordan will come back in the game along with Bill Cartwright, Horace Grant. You see the blocking out here. Rodman has inside on Paxson, and there's your tap over the top. Anytime you get caught in those mismatches, you must give Detroit a lot of credit today because they've been really exploiting them. But Chicago's bench held their own. Even though Detroit has the lead now, they're within three points. Normally, that's not a good matchup for the Bulls. Detroit, big edge there. Thomas. Oh. Rebound Jordan. And Jordan is fouled by Dennis Rodman. Loose ball foul. A loose ball foul. Second. A tough ball on uh, Dennis. You know, uh, as uh, Michael Jordan went up and, and really, how should I say, interfered with the release of that shot by Isaiah, he came down and his legs were tangled with Rodman. It had to be a foul. Mark McGuire will replace Rodman in the Detroit lineup. McGuire with seven points. Still the top scorer. Eight out of the nine Pistons who have played in this game have scored. Nearly four minutes elapsed. Period number two. McGuire guarding Pippen. Jordan with 13. Goes to three. Way off. And here's Thomas. And Paxson with the blocking foul. Foul is on John Paxson, his second team third. Well, the Detroit Pistons guards, and they depend on those three guards that Hubie mentioned. Dumars, Thomas, and Johnson have not shot well this series. A three-point attempt. 
miss by Aguirre. Thomas follows it up and gets the hoop way under their regular season shooting. Well, right now, the front line at Chicago, they need a wake-up call. This group that just came back out on the floor must understand that they've got to pound that defensive board. John Sally, by the way, a lot of people may not know that he has played hurt this year. Well, he had a very bad ankle injury, Dick, and he was very concerned about his sporadic play at the end of the year. Heard trade rumors and really didn't think that he would be with the ball club next year. But Isaiah sat him down. They had a great conversation, and he is playing outstanding basketball in the playoffs. Pippen misses the shot, and Sally nearly had the rebound, but a loose ball foul is called against Grant. Ball and I think they That's need Sally's spirit. I mean, he's the jokester on the club, and it's uh, when you look at the bad boys, Sally is one of the fun boys on this team. But Grant has picked up his third personal foul, and that's a problem for the Bulls. Well, Grant was able to keep Chicago in game two because of his outstanding offensive rebound. Pistons have scored seven in a row and have moved out to a five-point lead. Sally posting up against Grant. They want to see Horace get four here. That's a smart ball. He's got to take them low. Sally, John Sally. The turnaround. And John Sally who has six. 38 to 31. Paxson in the backcourt. Now Cartwright goes inside and he gets fouled in the middle. Foul is on James. You'll see down inside right now, Sally working hard. Doug Collins has told his players, make Sally and Rodman shoot over the top of you. Do not allow them to get inside for the dunks and easy layups. Foul is on Edwards. Team fouls. The Bulls have four and the Pistons three. And here's Cartwright again on the stripe. The one thing you can say about Bill Cartwright is that he now has, if he didn't have before, a measure of respect from his teammates. There is a togetherness that wasn't always there this season, but because of the way Bill played in the first two series, I think he feels a lot warmer now. Well, th that's a given. The thing which is uh, tough for Billy right now is the foul line. He's a 78% career foul shooter, and he's struggling at 68 through the playoffs. 38 to 32 in favor of the Pistons with 6.40 to go in the first half. McGuire posting up, quick pass out. Five on the shot clock against Pippen. That's where McGuire likes to shoot him, and McGuire with nine. He's the Pistons' high scorer. Jordan still leads everybody with 13, although Michael hasn't scored yet in this second quarter. The lead is eight. Pippen for three. And Thomas gets the rebound, and now the Pistons can open up their biggest lead of the game. Well, if you notice, everything that the Bulls are attempting, Dick, our perimeter, everything that Detroit is trying to do is down inside. Thomas rims a three. <laughs> Until then. <laughs> Until then. <laughs> Pippen foul as Jordan with a lightning fast pass, and Isaiah Thomas may have committed the foul. That's his second, second foul. Mahorn and Grant, each with three Johnny fouls. And the next foul by either side will put him in the penalty. And here's Scotty Pippen. He had his foot stepped on in the third quarter of game number two. Actually, according to Mark File, it's more like turf toe than anything else. He said he wouldn't have any trouble jumping because he could jump off the right foot. It's the running that's given him pain. And it's affected his shooting, I think, because he's one for six from the field thus far. Pippen is one of the key rebounders at both ends of the floor for Chicago. They need that spirited part that he can give them. Pistons by six. There Pippen is. reaches in for the foul. And for Scotty, that'll be his second, and the Bulls are in the penalty. So for Doug Collins, that means that the Pistons will shoot now from now to the rest of the period. You'll see as Scotty Pippen goes out here now, he'll grab McGuire's shirt. There it is right there. And he then, Jack, pushed himself right out into the, uh, how should I say, defending against that cross-court pass. Mark Aguirre, native of Chicagoan. Corzine checks in the game, replacing Grant. Aguirre, for the most part, has not really played all that well here in his hometown. 
Thomas has had some brilliant games back in his hometown of Chicago and some games that he's not happy about, but McGuire has struggled for the most part. Here. Well, you know, it's interesting. In all of the playoff games, McGuire has only been to the line 14 times, and that's a low amount for a small forward. Jordan with a screen, offensive foul. No shot, offensive foul. It's against Corzine, and that was that moving pick that you talked about that they're going to look for today. Well, we said that at the top. On all pick and rolls and also the screens, the big people in this game must hold the pick and do not hit anyone with the flying elbows. So the Pistons leading by eight again can establish their biggest margin with a basket. Johnson off the screen, misses. Pippen has it knocked away, and Vinnie Johnson misses a layup. Aguirre gets it though. So the Bulls fell asleep, and the Pistons took advantage. And Chicago has not scored a basket in five and a half minutes. And a 20-second timeout called by Doug Collins. Right now, Dick, Chicago's really struggling within their half-court sets. If you notice, any time a guy is coming off of something that they're trying for their primary move, he is not wide open. It is forcing them into three and four options. Right now, Pat O'Brien. All right, Dick, thank you very much. I just talked to Horace Grant, who says he thinks he does indeed have the flu. He's very weak, and he says he's kind of sick today. So we'll see how that goes. Let's go back to you. Well, Pat, you better get away from that bench because we don't want to see you <laughs> catching <laughs> anything. You know, we have That's a game right. coming up on Monday. We'll have to put you to bed with a lot of fluids. Is that the preventative way to do it? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Bulls come out after the 22nd. They've got Hodges and Jordan along with Cartwright, Corzine, and Pippen. So they have two centers in the game, and Corzine and Cartwright. Well, in game one of the series, they worked real well together, and Corzine made a big contribution point-wise. Detroit on a 15-3 run after the Bulls led by two. Under five minutes to go now in the half. Jordan draws the, or Hodges draws the foul, and is pushed and will shoot two. Isaiah Thomas picking up his third foul. So Mahorn and Thomas are two Pistons. Now, Burden with three personals, and Isaiah will get out. He'll be re replaced by Joe Dumars. Who was Dumars' idol when he was at school? I couldn't oh, believe it. Interesting. Uh, Joe, when he was playing at McNeese State, you know, he's down as the 17th leading scorer in the history of NCAA basketball. His, his guy that he patterned his game after was Isaiah Thomas. And his coach said to him, ask him one day, why? And he said, because as a little man, he can dominate an NBA game. And I want to really pattern my game after him. And Joe Dumars has it all. And that's before he can be his teammate. Corzine saves it nicely to Cartwright. Open, Hodges. Jordan out leaps Dumars for the rebound. Ten-point lead for Detroit, and Jordan says, all right, let's set this up and take our time. This is the guy that they've got to get the shot opportunities for. He was on a roll in that first quarter. Pick and spot up Corzine. Seven on the shot clock. Let's see what Jordan does. That's what he does. He gets the basket. Only his first points of the second quarter, however. And Detroit is leading by eight. Four-ten remaining in the first half. Pippen with two fouls on Aguirre. Facing up and hitting Mark Aguirre, Mark Aguirre now with 15 points. And the Pistons following their game plan are going to their offensive threat. Very tough half-court defense. They funnel and fill the Pistons and get the loose balls. That's why teams are averaging only 90 against them in the playoffs, which is a phenomenal figure. Well, if you notice how quick Sally got over there for that double team because they knew Jordan was going to try to take Dumars off the dribble. Aguirre, foul. See, Aguirre has a complete game. He can play real tough down in low uh, or throw in the fadeaway jump shot. He can hit the three-pointer facing you, and then he's difficult off the dribble. Here you'll have Sally coming over to help Dumars now. Not bad. Michael Jordan was looking for a bump that time. Cartwright committing his second foul. So right now the Pistons are playing two big men in Edwards and Lane Beer as Sally and Rodman lead the game, and McGuire misses the free throw. But Collins wants to get Paxson back here. 
and Corzine. he'll go in for Corzine. So again, the Bulls have a three-guard alignment with Jordan, Hodges, and Paxson in there. Well, what this does, Doug is hoping that Mark Aguirre will now try to match up with Michael Jordan, and hopefully they'll be able to take him off the dribble. But now Chuck can counteract this and, and put Aguirre on one of the two guards, either Paxson and Hodges, and still stay with Dumars. Let's see what happens. Talk about Chuck and Doug. Doug played for Philadelphia when Chuck was an assistant coach. 47 to 36. Less than three and a half to play in the second quarter, and the Bulls have scored only nine points in this quarter. Credit Detroit's defense. And that'll be a foul against the Pistons. They're over the limit. And Joe Dumars now with his second foul. See, the disappointing thing to me as an observer is that uh, Michael Jordan has gone down in and has posted Joe Dumars and Vinnie Johnson time after time. But it is taking the other guards a long period of time to see it and get him the initial pass. John That's only Long. the tenth point of the quarter for the Bulls. John Long, who did not play in game one, briefly in game two, but has some defensive intensity that Chuck Daly likes, has now come in. Well, John Long was with the, the ball club early when they had Kelly Chapuka, John Long, and Isaiah as their three main scorers. So he is a proven veteran with a lot of playoff experience. Hodges trying to play long nose to nose. Got to watch out there. Now that bumping might cost you. Lane Beer smothered by Pippen. Now Edwards finds Aguirre. And Aguirre is red hot. Well, if he has had rough games in his hometown, not today. He has 18 points, including his last four. Jordan is fouled, going in with his left hand, and will go to the line. And Lane Beer with a few words for Billy Oaks and for Jack Madden as well. Well, Lane Beer is claiming that Michael wiped him out with his right arm. But if you notice today, Michael Jordan is beating his man every time by going to his left. Only the first foul for Lane Beer. Irving's for well, the Pistons have their biggest lead of the game with that much time remaining in the second quarter. And, uh, Hubie, we talked about the relationship between Chuck Daly and Doug Collins in Philadelphia. But, of course, you go back with Chuck Daly when you were assistants at Duke University. Yeah, I was the freshman coach. Chuck was the assistant, and we worked for a legendary figure at the NCAA level, AA level at Duke by a guy named Vic Bubis. And I'll never forget, everyone thinks that Chuck Daly just became a good dresser now that he's <laughs> making big money. But back then on an assistant salary, he said to me one day, he says, you know, you could be one of the worst dressed guys in America. <laughs> Come over to my house, I'm going to give you a few ties. He gave me 27 ties off the back of his rack, and we didn't even dent. He had three layers of ties still going. <laughs> I hope he didn't give you the one you have on today. We're at Chicago oh, Stadium. Game three of the NBA Eastern Conference Final as the Detroit Pistons lead the Chicago Bulls 49 to 38 and Michael Jordan who has 17 points shooting a pair. Aguirre with 18 he's in the foreground is the Pistons high score now. It's a 49 to 40 game and pressure in the backcourt by Chicago for the first time. Well, they feel that they can, you know, really hamper John Long, wear the shot clock down, and hope that would force them into a quick shot. But John Long did a nice job that time. Vinnie Johnson leaves it in for Edwards and a fine play on a sort of a pick and roll. Well, you know, the Pistons are almost as good as the Los Angeles Lakers in rotating the basketball and finding the free people once you commit in double team. Good offensive call. Foul. And they'll call the offensive foul. Eddie, Eddie Rush catches uh, Cartwright backhanding uh, James Edwards in a low post. You know, James Edwards was trying to bump Cartwright off the spot, and Billy wiped him out with a forearm. Good call. Corzine replaces Cartwright, who sits down with his third foul. Cartwright has scored five points. As we're getting close to the two-minute mark of this first half in the Detroit Pistons. Looks like they've got their act together to this point. This isn't a bad number 10 player, John Long. <laughs> That's right. right. With that much experience and the opportunity to score. Lane Beer short on the three. Loose ball into the hands of Pippen. Here's Paxson has Jordan. John Paxson. 
Beautiful. And a fine decision because the Pistons were expecting the pass to Michael. Well, and the one thing you didn't have to worry about is Lambeer blocking your shot because he very seldom will go for the block. Nine-point lead for the Pistons, who led by one after the opening period. A runner oh. missed by Vinnie Johnson. Paxson knocks it off of Aguirre, and it's Chicago's ball. So Good hustle. Paxson has made two alert plays at both ends in the last minute. Yeah, well, he was lucky on that one because when Vinnie Johnson shot it, he should have blocked them off the board, and he didn't. Vinnie kept it alive. Nice to be lucky, too. <laughs> you know. You're right. Traveling. Offensive foul. Offensive foul, not traveling. Jack Madden makes the call on Scotty Pippen, and that'll be his third, so the entire front line for the Bulls, Grant, Pippen, and Cartwright, all now with three personal fouls. Well, Scotty Pippen, you know, saying something to Jack Madden, but these three reps today have been very consistent. On any ball handle where I'm handing the ball to you and setting a pick, you better be stopped, or they are catching you for a moving pick. Charles Davis replaces Pippen. And the foul is called as Vinnie Johnson stumbled his way in, and the foul is against Paxson. That's three on John Paxson. See, watch this move by Pippen as he hands the basketball off. Now, you, here comes the second cutter. There he is. He's moving and setting it up. Now, that's debatable. I honestly thought yeah. from our position, our angle, that he was set on that move. Two shots. I'd agree with you. There's Pippen and Grant, inseparable off the court in hotel restaurants and everywhere, sitting together now with three fouls. And so far, it has not been a productive afternoon for either one of them. Pippen with four points, Grant with only two, as you look at the many players with three fouls in the game. Vinny Johnson with the free throws, and it's an 11-point Piston lead. That much time remaining in the first half. At this end of the floor now, John Long is playing Michael Jordan. Corzine guarded by Edwards. Hodges for three. Out of bounds. And the officials. And finally, Ed Rush says it's Chicago's ball as Oaks and Madden could not tell. Well, they were both blocked out on that, and we had a very good uh, angle. Uh, and that was excellent because the opposite referee, that slot guy, that's why he's here. He bails you out, Eddie Rush. Under a minute to go in the half. George Traveling. lost the ball. You can't get it. And stepping on the line, Detroit it's going to be Detroit's ball. Craig Hodges has not scored in this first half. That's the guy that the Bulls expect to get the long-range shots or the threes from. Lead is 11 for Detroit. They have 15 on the shot clock. Like I said, Detroit, excellent. As soon as they find that double team, they rotate that ball quickly. Now I know Doug is, Doug is upset because he, wanted, he wants it called at the other end of the floor. You better watch it because he's close. As a matter of fact, he got it. He got it. Uh-oh, watch out now, Doug. Don't get carried away here now. I've got to ask you this. How many times have you heard people say the coach wanted a technical foul? Do you believe any of that? You know, I, I really don't. I think that most times what you're doing is you're testing the guy because some days you can say as much. The only trouble is you cannot interpret his views for today. Yesterday he might have taken all of that abuse from you because, you know, things were going well in his life. He was in a nice mood cycle. But today you could see Jack Madden was not going to take any of that from Doug. Long made the tee, and now he's on the line for two. The Pistons have their biggest lead of the game. Trying to add to it here in the final half minute of this, of this first half. And maybe those intense practices that resulted in a few skirmishes amongst the Pistons this week up at their practice arena, at the Oakland gym up there in Michigan have paid off because they have come out very focused, as Pat Riley would say, and very impressive. Well, John Long, a 92% foul shooter over the season. I mean, he's your 10th guy, and he's always played forwards at the college level, so playing a guy as big as Michael Jordan is not going to bother him that much. Jordan, foul, gets yeah. the basket. And lurking is always Michael Jordan, no matter what the situation in the game. Well, you'll see Michael Jordan coming around a curl here. There's your first pick, you see. And then as he cuts down, he has an angle. Now, James Edwards must get the job done. But who is better 
in this league than Michael Jordan in leaning in the front shoulder to get the foul, then the release of the shot. 22 points in the first half for Jordan. He is the only Chicago Bull in double figures. McGuire with 18, same story for Detroit. Final seconds of the first half. Edwards from the corner. Oh. And that'll do it. Half time. All 10 Detroit Pistons have scored in the game, and their defense in the second quarter was impressive. Chicago managed only five baskets. And that's the end of the first half with the score. The Pistons 56 and the Bulls 45. Chicago shot only 33% in the second quarter, so Detroit's defense really clamped out and outscored the Bulls 28 to 18. That sounds like a Detroit quarter, 28 to 18, doesn't it? Yes, it does, and usually they do that to you in the last quarter. So we start the second half. It's Hodges and Jordan at guard, and up front it's Grant Pippen and Cartwright, and Grant Pippen and Cartwright are all playing with three personal fouls. Give you Detroit's lineup. They have Mark McGuire, who's their high scorer with 18, up front with John Sally instead of Mahorn, who has three. Three fouls, that is. Lane Beer is the center, and Thomas and Dumars in the back line. Michael Jordan throws behind. Four on the shot clock. And Hodges with his first field goal of the game, his first points. And, boy, Chicago is really going to need something from him if they're going to challenge. Well, if they don't show any in outside perimeter game, the Detroit defense will be stacked inside of the foul line area. Thomas with a fake, good feed to Sally. They get two John there. Sally. You talk about perimeter shooting. The Bulls are 0 for 5 from three-point range today after going 0 for 8 in the last game. So they've had a big drought from long range. On the turnover, Dumars yeah, hits Dumar. and Detroit looks sharp. All 10 players who have been in the game have scored for the Pistons. And their bench has outscored the Chicago Bulls by 11. Jordan hits from the corner, and that was the margin at the half. The bench scoring of 11. The Bulls must get going here defensively. It just seems that in the last 8 to 10 minutes of this game, every time Detroit comes down, they either score or get fouled. Dumars. Sally over the top is called for the foul. And that'll be his second. Foul, John Sally. His second, team's first. They must apply the defensive pressure on the shots and then block off Detroit, hold them the one shot, and get some easy baskets in the flow. See that? McGuire has more points than the entire Bulls front line. Cartwright tries to amend that a little bit, and he gets two. They've got to go into Bill Cartwright, and every time the Bulls have made that statement and have done it, they've been all right. Well, he's had three shot opportunities. He has two scores, plus on two other occasions, he's been fouled. Plenty of time on the shot clock for the Pistons. Nearly two minutes gone by in the third quarter. Aguirre, long range. Wow. What Aguirre. a game. 20 points for Mark Aguirre. He has scored 22 in the two previous games coming in. Well, he's giving you that outside game, Dick, which really makes him dangerous. Get him off the ball. He can't miss. Cartwright again goes in and is fouled by Sally. And that's what the Bulls are trying to do. They're trying to go inside with Cartwright, and Sally picks up two quick ones. Well, we said in the first half, there's no way that Sally can body up with Cartwright. There's such a distinct advantage for Cartwright in the weight department. Matter of fact, here comes Mahorn right now. They need a bulky guy to keep him from getting down in low. Cartwright with the unorthodox shooting style hits the free throw. Are you saying this man is bulky? <laughs> well, let's just say that when he puts his 250 plus on you, you you're not moving him below the box area. <laughs> you know, whenever we go to practice, he always gives us the elbow. You know, like he thinks we're in the league too. No, he's just warming up. As a matter of fact, this might be some things that you might have said about him. <laughs> I can't recall offhand. Yeah, he always gives you a smile when he knocks me down. Yes, of course. Hard ride with the two free throws. And it's a nine-point piston lead. Lane Beer left open. Thomas trapped. I'm checking that. It was Dumars who made the play to Isaiah. Ah, Detroit really active on the offensive boards today. That's where they're hurting Chicago the most. Dumars. 
And the rebound, Cartwright. Chance for the Bulls to cut it now to seven. Jordan can't go right, can't go left. Uses a Cartwright screen. Nothing doing, and Mahorn uses his bulk for the rebound. Pistons led by one after one quarter of play. Relatively high-scoring quarter, and then it... Second period, Detroit's defense clamped down, outscored Chicago by 10. Nice. And Thomas lost it going in. Dumas gave him a good pass. Yes, it was. Jordan open. Hodges for three. And the Bulls continue to struggle for three, and Thomas has one man to beat. It's Cartwright. Does his Marcus Haynes imitation. The Harlem Globetrotters and is tied up. That was excellent defense by Billy Cartwright. Just by staying there and not committing, he forced Isaiah to pull up. Watch, see, Cartwright stayed right inside. Then, unfortunately for him, he slipped. Didn't Marcus Haynes used to do that and then just dribble the ball for a while yes, for the Harlem did. Globetrotters? Uh, for Harlem Globetrotters <laughs> when he played with Goose Tatum, and that was one of the great basketball teams of all time when they had that group together. Yeah. Jordan has called the play. Twelve on the shot clock. Here goes Cartwright against Lane Beer. Cartwright now has scored six points already in this third quarter. And it's a seven-point game now. And you can see that he has a feel, Dick. He's making his move with really little, little effort. Dumars feeding inside, loose ball, Mahorn scored, but it was like a pinball machine, and the Bulls very nearly on the double team got the ball back. Well, Michael Jordan was in there and knocked that loose, a little discouraged with himself because he thought he had it. 7.35 remaining in the third. Cartwright posting up again, they want to go inside, illegal, illegal defense against Detroit. Well, they catch Mahorn that time below the foul line area, and he had to be above that because his man was beyond the top of the circle. Chuck Daly, you know, he's looking at it. He knew that they were looking to go for the double team. This is where we are. Our score is 64 to 55, Detroit. Dick Stockton, Hubie Brown, Pat O'Brien. In a big game in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Hodges for three. Still struggling. Jordan intercepts the Dumars pass. And Jordan comes back, gets his own rebound. Thomas tries to knock it away. Nice. Cartwright inside, gets two. No basket. No basket. Offensive foul. That's four on Cartwright. He must have used his left arm, Hubie. That had to be the foul. That's frustration for any coach. Watch this great pass by Jordan. Here comes Cartwright. Check. Check the arm now. There it is. He took Lambier and put him away with that left arm. That was a big play because the Bulls could have scored two. Come within seven instead. Cartwright has his fourth foul. Lambier against Grant. Oh! McGuire can't save it. Chicago has it. And Aguirre is out of sight right now. Well, he's up over the top of Chuck Daly. I hope both of them are okay. Well, they went right over the top of that chair. Boy, Chuck went flying, and so did Aguirre. Not a hair out of place, though. No. <laughs> You'll see this loose ball. No Chicago player tries. There's Aguirre over the top. He grabs Chuck Daly to cushion the ball. <laughs> <laughs> now, here was the collision with Aguirre trying to save the ball. Now, watch Chuck Daly. He sees him coming, and Aguirre knocks Daly down. Not all that funny if you have to be the guy who's going to bear all the bruises as a result of this. Pat O'Brien is over there on the Pistons bench. Pat, what do you have? I was just talking to Mark Aguirre. For one thing, he said, you know, that team meeting that they had with Isaiah Thomas had, the celebrated meeting, one of the things that came out of that was aggressiveness, and we saw it just then. By the way, he's okay. He just bumped his knee, and he said, 
Daly gave him an elbow on his way in. I said, he said, was that him? I said, yeah, it was. The bad boy legend continues. See ya. McGuire with 20 points. That's the toughest thing he's had to take today. He has hit his last five shots from the field. He's out of there, and Dennis Rodman replaces him. A good offensive rebounder is Dennis Rodman, and as you know, one of the best defenders in the league. Dumars on Jordan. Jordan doesn't like how close he's playing and makes him pay. Michael Jordan makes him pay. Now, how about every time that Jordan is catching the ball today, Dumars is laying his hands right on his body. That's why you saw him try to swat him away. Here's Dumars on the offensive end with a lay-in. Seven for Joe Dumars, and frankly, his offense has had to suffer because of the responsibility he has in guarding Michael Jordan. Well, night in and night out, Joe's always taking a tough offensive guard. Plus, people forget he plays point guard as well as sexy. There's that hand again. See, he doesn't want that call. But what he is doing is basically illegal. Every time Michael Jordan catches that ball, he lays his hands right on Jordan. There it is, right there. See, he doesn't want that as a call, but reputation sometimes help you, Dick, when you are a first-team all-defensive player. There they are again. Three team fouls against the Pistons. Open is Hodges. He's not hit a three yet. Drives to the hoop. Rodman the rebound. Craig Hodges. Still tangled up with Rick Mahorn there, the other end. Nearly five and a half remaining in the third quarter. Now Jordan has to do the defensive job on Dumars. In the Mahorn against Corzine. Great defensive play by Corzine, but Rodman's quickness beat him to the ball. And the 24 second, second clock expired because it was no shot. So give it over to Chicago. And the Bulls trail by nine. Watch the outstanding defense here. You'll see when the ball goes into Corzine, Mahorn makes a nice move, but Corzine is right there on that block. And then we had a little rumble, everybody trying to get their hands on it. Jordan around the screen, now Dumars with him, Horace Grant. Rodman with another rebound. See, the shots are there. The Bulls just cannot hit a shot outside of 15 feet unless it's Michael Jordan. That was the story of game one for Detroit. Thomas is tied up, and he'll jump it up, I think, Pippen or Jordan. Well, Chuck Daly very upset because when that ball was blocked up on top, in order for it to be a jump ball, you must come down onto the floor, both players. Technical foul against Daly. Here we go. Let's see what we got here right now. All right, there it is. Now, in the referee's opinion that they had control, Corzine had control of that ball when Isaiah hit. You could not see the lower part of the body that time. Technical foul on Chuck Daly, called by Doug Collins, the prince of pessimism, oh, as he is known to be. Oh, that's not a well, Chuck is sometimes cautious in his estimation of how his team is doing. So a technical on Daly. Earlier, Doug Collins picked up a tee. Now, the one thing you cannot do is win this tap and have them get it. They're going to do it again. No, interference. Oh, Violation on the tap. And it's going to be Detroit ball. They claim that Corzine stole the tap that time. See, that's frustration. You know you're going to get the tap. You got a seven-foot guy jumping against a 6-1 guard. You're hoping for a possession. Dumar slices in and is pushed. That's only the first team foul against the Bulls in this quarter. With less than five minutes to play, Paxson or Hodges with his third. That's Craig Hodges. And Joe Dumars going to the line. See, after game two, the Detroit guards, Dumars, Johnson, and Isaiah, feel in their heart that they can take the matchup of any Chicago matchup off the dribble and create something no matter where the shot clock is. John Paxson, John Paxson comes in for Hodges, who leaves the game one for eight from the field. Yeah, he's struggling in threes, Dick. 0 for 5. It's hurt the club because they've been wide open shots. You know, you pointed out the Bulls have had the shots. They haven't made them. That was a story in game one with Detroit. They had a lot of open shots but couldn't make them. Well, the three guards went 11 for 45. That's like 23, 24 percent. Here's Jordan in the lane. Out to Pippen. Paxson from the corner. Two-point basket for John Paxson. It's an eight-point Piston lead with 425 remaining in the third. Pistons led by 11 after the second quarter.
Thomas open for three. Long rebound, Rodman. Penetrating is Thomas, blocked by Corzine. That's two solid block shots by Corzine in this quarter. This is a tough defense, half court. Jordan. Rodman with another rebound. He has six in the game. You can see Michael did not have control of that ball on the release that time. The ball was rocking back in his palm. Aguirre on the bench with 20. He went out after his collision with Chuck Daly, his coach, trying to save a loose ball. Five on the shot clock for Detroit. Mahorn. Didn't really have control, but went up quickly and got it just in the nick of time. And the Pistons are up by 10. He willed that in. Come Nothing on. Like he, he didn't shoot it. He threw it up and willed it in. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. What was the last time you've seen Mahorn take a jump left hook? Today. Jordan with 27 leads the Bulls. Here's Michael. Here's Rodman. He's got Dumars and Thomas. Dumars. Oh. Rebound Pippen. Under three minutes now to go in the third. Right now the Bulls have made up only one point this quarter. Paxson. Oh. And Grant is pushed. And that'll be the fourth time foul out. against Detroit. Detroit. And the Pistons will call a timeout. Call Bill Lane Beer commits the foul. Crowd loves that one, you know that. <laughs> He's all right now, though. Well, you know, all he does, he just continues to keep going. Well, let's see if Michael gets the ring. Magic stole the MVP. Of course, a lot of people feel that Magic Johnson didn't steal it, but earned it. And I think the way the Lakers are playing, no one's going to argue that one. Well, right now, Magic Johnson is on a tear. Worthy's been hot. The bench has been great. But Magic Johnson has missed two triple doubles by one in three categories. Vinny Johnson and Mark Aguirre are in the Detroit lineup, and Charles Davis checks in for Chicago. Paxson misses. Again, the shot was there, and Chicago can't connect. And we have two and a half to play in the third quarter of a 10-point Piston lead. Different characteristic than the first two games when Chicago had dominated Detroit. Second half was all Detroit. Good outlet by Pippen. Paxson against Dumars. Goaltending against Rodman. And Paxson gets the hoop. I tell you, that was, a, that was some move by Dennis Rodman. He came a long way to get that shot. Now, it was goaltending. What they need right now is some spirited play by the other four guys on the floor other than Michael Jordan. To loosen it up for him so he's not triple teamed every time he makes a move. Lane Beer gets Lane free inside and a pass from Aguirre. So the Bulls fall asleep defensively. Two Under two minutes to go, a 72-62 Detroit lead. Pistons had the best road record in the NBA this year and won all six games from Chicago. In fact, it won nine in a row before they lost the opening game of the series. Another goaltending against Rodman, and Corzine gets credit for that basket. Excellent call that time. Dennis is frustrated. You'll see here right down inside. Watch Rodman working really hard. Down on Charlie Davis, here comes your shot. Now you say, yes, Dennis has great leaping ability, but he also does push off a little bit. Play beer inside, Aguirre, turn around. Mark Aguirre. Mark Aguirre. Mark Aguirre now with 22 points. That matches his total points in the first two games of this series. Every time the Bulls come close, Detroit makes a beautiful execution and hammers in a nice, a nice low pivot play. Right in your face. Fourteen on the shot clock. One twelve remaining in the third. Davis saw guarded by Rodman. Corzine can't bank it in. Lame beer defending, and now the Pistons. What a game Dennis Rodman is having on the boards, Dick. I mean, he is really accumulating the rebounds. Rodman has. Eight rebounds this quarter, nine in the game. What a play, Dumars with one of those long passes inside. And now it's a 12-point lead. Give them their due today, Dick. Any guy who's open a half a step, the ball is right there on the money. On the 
switch. Jordan guarded by Lambeer. No easy layups when you get to this point of the playoffs. And Rodman gave Jordan the shot. Watch uh, Joe Dumars here make a pass right over his left shoulder down inside. And you'll see Rodman coming without the ball. Excellent anticipation by Dumars. And how about the delivery of that pass? Had Magic Johnson written all over that one. Didn't Foul was on Rodman, his third. Magic made some pass last night to Michael Thompson on a fast break at a crucial time inside of the last two minutes versus Phoenix. Jordan with the free throw. The lead is 10. There's the time remaining in the period. 20 on the shot clock, so there's a 12-second differential. Right now, Chicago is in a 1-2-2 two, two little trap. Now it's six. You can see it in red. Illegal, illegal defense. defense called against Chicago, oh, so each team has been hit with one warning. illegal defense warning. Well, that was costly, Dick, because the shot clock was inside of five seconds. seconds. Now you get a new 24 seconds, so they get the last shot of the quarter. Sam Vincent will replace Jordan. It's a technical foul as well when you have an illegal defense within the last 24. So on top of all that, a tee, and Dumars will shoot it. Sam Vincent. Texas Jordan Chicago. will get a breather here. He has scored 29 points. And it's been an uphill climb for the Chicago Bulls, who have led only once in this game, early in the second quarter at 31-29. They had their bench in for the most part. And then Detroit went to work. They put the pedal to the metal, and they've been going ever since on both ends. McGuire for three. And Beer. Foul with three seconds to go. And the Chicago Bulls right now are being beaten to the punch by the Detroit Pistons. If this were a boxing match, that would be the analysis. Well, we said earlier that the team that gets to the offensive boards has been able to do a good job in games one and two. Today, the quickness of foot of Detroit is outstanding, and Chicago is shooting poorly, but they cannot get a second shot in their half of the floor. And an offensive foul against Joe Dumars. Keep in mind that Horace Grant, who has scored only two points tonight, and a, a tremendous rebounder with 20 in the last game, Three has been ill with the flu one. and has not been a factor at all in this one. Chuck Daly very upset because of Dumars getting his fourth. Four on Dumars. He has the most fouls for the Pistons. Cartwright is the only Chicago Bull with four. The lead is 11. And Pippen will inbound for Chicago with Vincent, Paxson, Davis, and Corzine intercepted. One second, no basket. No basket. Traveling no before the basket. Well, that's what we had at halftime. That's the margin now, 11. And that is the end of the third period. The Pistons, 77, the Bulls, 66. We'll return to Chicago Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. And welcome back to the 1989 NBA playoffs and our coverage here from CBS Sports. The Pistons lead the Bulls 77 to 66. The last couple of timeouts in the Chicago Bull huddle has been simply one word, rebounding. Michael Jordan says we got to get somebody to rebound the basketball. They feel they are being outstrength on the boards. Let's go back to you guys. And there's Michael talking to his teammates. Grant with 21 minutes because of the flu, only one rebound. That's the same guy that had 20 boards in the last game. So as we start the fourth quarter, the Pistons will have Thomas and Vinny Johnson in the backcourt. Mark Aguirre, Dennis Rodman, and Bill Lambeer up front. Chicago defends with Michael Jordan and Jim Paxson at guard. And up front is Grant. He's in there with Charles Davis and Bill Cartwright. Cartwright playing with four fouls. So is Dumars. No, Dumars is out. Well, a foul on Paxson, I believe. Fouls on John Paxson. That's Quick his foul fourth. against Chicago. Teams first of the quarter. Detroit led by one after one quarter, and then their big period was the second when they outscored the Bulls 28 to 18. Great defense, and they played even in the third. He 
Detroit Pistons 63 and 19 at the best record in the NBA. They had lost only three games prior to March 1st or since March 1st before their game one defeat. And still looming is the fact that a year ago in their conference semifinal, Chicago and Detroit split the first two in Detroit, and then the Pistons won the remaining three. Hi, here we have Rodman on Michael Jordan. He says, the toughest thing for me is, is not to let him beat me to his left. Loses the ball to Thomas. He didn't beat him left, right, or down the middle that time. Basket here would give Detroit its biggest lead of the game. Seven on the shot clock. Grant, uh, double Aguirre, good passing. Lane Beer for three. Long rebound into the hands of Lane Beer again. Another offensive rebound opportunity for Detroit. It's the frustration of the day, Dick. They just cannot hold them down to one shot. And they can't hit the open shots either. Right at the other end. Yes. Aguirre batted away by Jordan. Good steal. Detroit is back defensively, though. They know how to do that. Grant is really tired. Finally gets into your picture now. Well, he had uh, Mark McGuire draped across oh, the legs. <laughs> that helps. That's it. That's the shot. He was tired, and he also had Aguirre draped on his shoulders. Paxson's missed only one shot today. Thomas with a move out to Vinnie Johnson. Aguirre with a high-arcing three attempt. Jordan. Took it away from Cartwright. Paxson goes around Lane Beer in a blocking foul, oh, no basket. Lane Beer picking up the foul. Lane Each Beer. team with one foul in this fourth quarter, and Lane Beer now has three. Every time Paxson catches the ball on the perimeter, they run right at him, and he knows that he must put it on the floor and go to the basket. James Edwards will come in for Bill Lane Beer, who goes out of the game. Edwards. As that fall away shot. Great bench the Pistons have. Two minutes gone by in the final period. See, Cartwright was very dangerous there in that third quarter, Dick, when they made their run before he picked up that fourth foul. That's right. It's a nine-point game now, and the crowd starts to get into it again. Uh, they're within striking distance, but once again, it's got to be at the defensive end. Vinnie Johnson for three, hits a big one. So that stops the tie. Pistons is that they are not a prolific offensive team. So you're right, Chicago has to make it tough for them to score first. Well, they're not a real big three-point shooting team, and the fact that Vinnie has hit two today is big. And a whistle away from the ball. Mark Aguirre with a personal foul, I believe. And that'll be the second team foul against Detroit. And we'll take a break right now and return. This crowd trying to get the Bulls going right here. Charles Davis up front with Grant and Cartwright. And with 9.15 to go, plenty of time, but a three-point basket by Vinnie Johnson are the kind of baskets that can break a team's back. Well, they just put a back switch in there, and they have Rodman on Cartwright. They're looking down inside. Billy has got to take Rodman in. Tries to. Tough to do it. But Rodman commits the foul. That's three now on the Pistons. But he made things tough for Cartwright. Well, you know, he's frustrated, but, you know, he's a battler. Chuck Daly says everyone should play the game as hard as Rodman. Every day, practice the same as games. He can guard any position on the floor, and Chuck is happy no matter, no matter who he's matched up against. Four fouls on Rodman, and maybe as a head-on defender, it's not bad. Cartwright. Basket's going to count. Rodman has been called for two goaltendings, and that one there. Interference. Just under nine minutes remaining in the fourth period. The lead is ten, and as you mentioned, Hubie, the Bulls have to make it first start defensively if they want to get back in. Vinny Johnson. Edwards comes out of nowhere. Loose ball. Rodman, and they're going to jump it up as Rodman scrapping. 
Uh, you must give them their due. I mean, well, they, we have, are. they have quick well. feet today. Everyone is going for every loose ball, and no matter how far that ball rebounds out, they make up the distance first. It's the aggressiveness that they lack. They were out of sync in the first two games. And Rodman wins the tap into the hands of Mr. Thomas, who before the game was warming up in a Los Angeles Raiders black jersey with silver trim and number 11 in his name on. Then he takes it from the corner, wide open. See, all day long, Paxton keeps cheating by trying to go over the top of that baseline pick, and Vinny Johnson just feeds to the corner. Jordan with 29. Pippen is open. Jordan Rodman with another rebound, and Dennis Rodman now in double figure off the board. And a Chicago foul will be their second. Alan Scotty Pippen, that's his fourth. How about second. this replay right here? You think Scotty Pippen is holding on to Rodman a little bit? Rod Dennis, you cannot get to the offensive board. <laughs> four fouls against Scotty Pippen. Cartwright, Paxson, and Pippen all with four. Isaiah Thomas today with five points. But has really made it happen with ten assists. James Edwards inside and the Pistons are getting the inside baskets and the perimeter as well. Well they've had great patience in feeding their post. Timeout. Timeout Time out Chicago. And every time the Bulls make a flurry the Pistons are there to answer it. Seven and a half remaining. And the Detroit Pistons have limited opponents to only 20 points in the playoffs in the fourth quarter, that is a phenomenal number indeed. And so far in the first four and a half minutes, Hubie, of this fourth quarter, they have stopped the Bulls who have scored only six. Nick, they're doing a great, every guy is not only taking care of his man, but he's quick on the rotations to help out another guy beating off the dribble. Key figure in the game today. Pippen, one for eight. Grant, one for four. Two key guys, two for 12. Grant, of course, bothered by the flu, has not been at full strength. Jordan moving around Edwards. Basket counts and a foul. Maybe that's a sign of what the Bulls may have in mind. 31 points now for Michael Jordan. Here's Pat O'Brien. All right, thank you, Dick. Behind the Bulls mentioned that last time out, Doug Collins gave his let's not quick speech. He said, we have to suck it up, and there is no quitting on the Chicago Bulls this year. He said, we've come this far not to waste it. Let's go back to you guys. Thank you, Pat. That's exactly what Chuck Daly told his team. He says, you know, we've been starting in October. Let's not be fools and throw this away. But, you know, Chicago's not going to quit. I mean, this even if they don't win this game, they're down two games to one in a long series. Well, we still have a lot of time in That's this right. game. That's right. This game isn't over yet. That's either. right. And the big thing is, is that they're getting what they want. They're getting an awful lot of open shots. You just have to make them. Vinny Johnson has all day for this three-point attempt, and maybe that's why he missed. Pushing off foul, call against Chicago. Fouls on Scotty Pippen. Scotty Pippen with his fifth foul, one more, and he's that's gone. No production from Chicago's starting forwards today. Well, Doug is frustrated. Once again, Rodman is there. He's everywhere on the offensive glass. Aguirre, isolated, will draw the foul and go to the line. Fouls on Horace Grant. Horace Grant his now with his fourth foul. foul. You see Dennis Rodman at the bottom of your screen here. Pippen trying to keep him away. Here goes the shot up. Now look at this. Up there with that one hand. 6'9", long arms, always working. He's the kind of guy you don't like unless he's on your side. Then you love him. If he's not on your side, boy, you really can dislike Dennis Rodman, right? Well, yeah, he's all elbows, you know, long arms, knees in your back as he's elevating. He's going to dive on the floor for every loose ball, and then when he does something good, he's pumping the arms up in the air. You know, he does get to you a little bit. I kind of like him a lot, and I think that as a top six man and defensive player, he's about right in there in both those categories. Well, he was high in the voting for six man of the year, and then as the best defensive player in the league, he came in third behind uh, Eaton, who won the award. Jordan has fouled going strong to the hoop and pays for it. Michael with 32 Edwards points for the Bulls is the game high scorer. Mark Aguirre Michael Jordan with 24 points having a terrific game three for Detroit. Foul was on Edwards. That's four on James Edwards. And there's Mark Aguirre. Played his college basketball at DePaul. He and Isaiah Thomas and Magic Johnson, good friends. Aguirre and Isaiah from Chicago. And 
Magic, of course, from East Lansing, Michigan. The lead is 11, and the Pistons have maintained that lead ever since we've had halftime. And they're going to go to Aguirre. They're bringing him to the ball in the low area. They're really slapping at each other. Well, Grant's doing a nice job. Right. They have four on the shot clock. Vinnie Johnson. And falls down and makes that kind of shot. Chicago has missed wide open shots, and Vinnie Johnson can't even see the hoop and throws it in. You get games like that sometimes. Well, yeah, but he's on a roll, and he has the feel today. And any time he's that way, we know that he can go into the unconscious state. And that'll be foul against Detroit. Foul is on Mark Aguirre. Mark Aguirre, and they're in the penalty, and Chicago will shoot. Vinnie Johnson, by the way, with 17 points, has hit two three-point baskets. There are only three Pistons in double figures. Aguirre with 24, Vinnie Johnson with 17, and Joe Dumars with 10. Vinnie's having a fine game. Here's Grant on the line. The Pistons know that a victory today will restore the home court advantage they lost when Chicago shocked them in the opening game of the series. And now would put the pressure on the Bulls for Monday to try to even the series and make it a two out of three affair. But we have just under six minutes to go. point game and the game's still very much in doubt by the way Jordan for three tipped up Pippen tried Grant tried at the other end Rodman is fouled no he won it before the foul traveling call against Dennis now he's over anxious Chuck's a little disappointed with that one that was a great pass by Vinnie Johnson and you know what happened that time was Rodman couldn't make up his mind whether he's going to shoot the jumper or whether he's going to try to dunk it. Just remember in the NBA, the threes really cut the margin here with teams. Rodman knocks it out of bounds. Even though Chicago is yet to hit a three-point basket today, that's three possessions right now. That's what they're trailing by. That was great denial that time by Rodman. The long arms knocking that one away from Jordan. Actually, four possessions. Jordan... Open Paxson for two. Down, Paxson. 90 to 80. You know, Michael Jordan is having some game here today. I and mean, a lot of people may not realize. That's right. He's playing a great offensive game. He's done a terrific job on Isaiah Thomas off the dribble. But when he's kicking out, it's the, uh, uh, how should I say, they just can't hit that outside jumper consistently. Hard right bats it away. Paxson trying to cut the lead to eight now. 440 remaining. Paxson misses the left-handed layup. And the Bulls had a chance. Stolen by Pippen. Here's a three attempt. The Bulls had missed eight three-point baskets before Pippen shot at a timeout. Doug Collins told his team, we got to show the poise to walk away. They learned a lot when Pippen was ejected in the New York series. They feel they learned a lot from that, so they don't want to be intimidated, throw the punch, and get knocked out. 4.20 to go in the fourth quarter, and the Bulls are within seven. That's as close as they've been in a long while. Aguirre working to the hoop. Foul. And it, it's Jordan or Pippen. And it's Michael Jordan with his second foul. Pat O'Brien. Pat. All right, Dick, thank you. One of the things in that last huddle, Chuck Daly was saying to his players, take this crowd out of this game. Daly told me before the game that was his goal today, to take the madhouse of Madison and make them the sad house on Madison. So they're trying to get the crowd out right now. Let's see if they do. Well, what a step, excuse me. No, you Doug, you remember Doug told us yesterday, Dick, he said, you know, they like being booed. He <laughs> mean the Detroit Pistons. One out of two by Aguirre, who's had a very steady game and 25 points. 
91-83, the lead is eight with four minutes remaining. Jordan. What a great shot high off the glass. Hubie he, is shaking his head in disbelief right here. Huh? He beat three guys who rotated to him, and he extended and shot over the top. Six-point game. That's two possessions. Losing it is Dumars. Pippen. Here's Jordan. And the foul against Detroit. They're in the penalty, and the Bulls will shoot, and a chance to cut it to four. They want Thomas in the game. Here you have Michael Jordan coming up. Now just watch how hard he works to get open. Now here comes the double, triple team, and there is that extension, that extra elevation. Isaiah Thomas replaces Benny Johnson for the Pistons. And Michael Jordan will be shooting for his 37th point. Make it his 38th. 38 for Jordan, and it's a four-point game. This place is going wild. Ten on the shot clock. Five. And they're going to call it against Detroit. Loose ball foul. Great defense that time by Chicago. They forced McGuire into a very bad shot, and then they went right to that defensive rebound. Mark McGuire. Phenomenal playoff tension in this game three of the Eastern Finals between the improbable Chicago Bulls and the favored Detroit Pistons. And Scottie Pippen will try to cut the Detroit lead to two. He misses the first. And he's been struggling all day in his shooting, but he's been doing an excellent job at the defensive end. We said if they're going to come back, they must force Detroit into the bad shots and then limit them to only one. And they're doing that right now. He missed them both, 91-87. So the Pistons maintain a four-point lead with three minutes to go. What's happening now is Detroit's offense has slowed down, and it's taking them too long a period of time to get into their movement. Rodman, with a great pass from Lane Beer, went back door that time. There's the time remaining in the fourth quarter. Pistons led by as many as 14. Bulls cut it to four. Jordan comes in, and it's a four-point game again. And 40 for Michael Jordan, a familiar number in the first two playoff series against Cleveland and New York. Look for the high pick and roll. Jordan almost saying to Thomas, go take the shot. Vinny Johnson goes in and gets the basket. He has been the savior for the Pistons today with 19. Time after time, he seems to be the one that every time when the Bulls get in striking distance, he makes the big score. Now we're getting close to the two-minute mark. Two minutes left in this ball game. Nine on the clock. Jordan again. Michael Jordan with 42 points. 13 here in this fourth quarter. High pick and roll again. Jordan is on Thomas. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Detroit is leading by four. Vinny Johnson, the man of the hour for Detroit. And an offensive foul Offense called Detroit. against Vinny Johnson. Elbow Paxson. Great defense that time by Paxson. Here comes Joe Dumars. Dumars. Watch Paxson move his feet and beat Vinny to the spot. There goes the elbow right into his chest. Jack Madden had that call before the elevation for the shot. Jordan has scored the last eight points for the Bulls. Paxson, open. Not that time, but it's put in by Grant. Horace Grant, and it's a two-point game. 95-93. These Bulls did not quit. Whatever.
whatever happens, they did not quit today. Oh, this is great. The building is rocking. Dumars, no basket. No foul before the shot, and it'll be a shooting situation. Both teams are in the penalty. Paxson's foul. Five on John, and Dumars will shoot two important free throws. John Sally gets off the bench, and he'll be checking in. Timeout. Call. What a game. Chicago. Timeout, Chicago. Dumars will go to the line. He is four for five from the free throw line today. Five minutes ago, the Pistons led 90 to 77. The Bulls have cut 11 points off that lead with 110 remaining. Paxson has been a key man. He's with Jordan, Grant, Pippen, and Cartwright. And joining Dumars in the lineup, Lane Beer, Sally, Thomas, and Rodman. It's a four-point game again. There's the time remaining in the fourth quarter. Chicago started to get hot from the field, as you saw. But this is where Detroit's defense usually plays its best. Under a minute now, and nine on the shot clock. Jordan pumps and scores. How did he do that? How about he puts it up, brings it back. Stays in the air, the defense comes down. Watch this as Jordan comes off here now. You'll see he comes around Cartwright, gets the gun. Now, here he is. Now watch, two players up on him, and here comes the third. It's like the Cleveland basket when he won the series. Watch Michael Jordan now come off, get a pick from Pippen. Now, here he has the two guards. He gets by the guard. Now watch Sally come into your picture. Go, there's the pump. And even Sally almost got that. 15 for Jordan in the fourth period. 44 in the game for Sir Michael. The main thing now is you're trying to get people to take the shot, block out, hold them the one, and try not to foul. 14 on the shot clock. Dumars, now nine. There it is. They jump switch on Dumars. Finds Lane Beer. Three seconds. Misses a three. Rodman is there and a foul call against Detroit. They get Dennis Rodman pushing off. Yes, they get him blocking out Grant that time, Dick. Chuck Daly just sitting there. Can't believe it. All right. But that's good hustle. Give Chicago total credit. They trapped Dumars so that he could not penetrate and then Michael Jordan came and even trapped Lamb Beer on that shot. Five fouls on Rodman, and Horace Grant, one for two from the line, can tie the score, believe it or not, after the long uphill climb. But let's see. <laughs> 28 seconds remain. Fourth quarter. Detroit. A tremendous comeback by the Chicago Bulls against the best defensive team in the NBA. The Bulls have trailed since the second minute of the second period today. And with 28 seconds to go, they're all tied. And Detroit has to cook something up offensively in their huddle. Now remember, Detroit has one timeout plus a 20 second. When they take the ball inbounds, they have plenty of time here to get a shot off. Chicago knows that there's four seconds different on the shot clock, so once again, the key is to play solid defense, make them shoot over us, hold them the one shot, and try not to foul. They're gonna use their 20 right now, Hubie, because the Pistons wanted to see how Chicago was going to defend. So now they are left with only one full timeout. Keep in mind that Isaiah Thomas has scored only five points in the game, none this half. And when this game is history, and what a game it has been, 
We'll have third round action from the Atlanta Golf. And remember, the guy that's guarding Isaiah Thomas is the guy with the 40 plus points, Michael Jordan. He's done an outstanding job on him today, off the dribble, not allowing Isaiah to beat him and getting down inside to cause problems. Both teams in the penalty. Key situation now is that when they get the ball inbounds, that you guard this guy who throws the ball in and you do not lose track of him cutting to the basket. Craig Elo for Cleveland, remember that? Yes, indeed. They're going to milk it down and let Isaiah go one on one. And the differential is more towards three seconds than four. Isaiah and Jordan, who else should be in the middle of the center stage here? Uh oh, watch the high pick and roll. They were right on top of that call. What do you think, Hubie? It's been a consistent call throughout the game both ways today. Watch, they came up now to pick, set the pick. Lambier sets it. There's your move right there. Catches Jordan on the hip that time. And Chicago and Jordan had it all the way. Has used a timeout, and they've got nine seconds to try to win this game. All right, we're giving you that offensive uh, foul again. Watch to the right as Lambeer comes in here. Now moving, catches Jordan right on the hip. Billy Oates, the referee, was standing right to the right of your screen, had a perfect angle. And what an expression on the face of Chuck Daly. Now, how does Detroit play Michael Jordan? Well, it'll be interesting to see if they double-team him as soon as the ball is thrown inbounds. Now, every team plays differently here, Dick. Some teams will put a guy on the ball, out of bounds, and then try to discourage your vision on the inbounds pass. Some teams will take off of the ball and use that player as a double teamer to trap the first guy who catches. Chicago still has a regular timeout and a 20. Pistons have scored only two points in the last two minutes. All right, Detroit using Sally to disrupt the vision of Pippen here. And they have Dennis Rodman on Michael Jordan here now. And Dumars is with him also, as a matter of fact. They have a timeout if they want to use it, and they'll call the 20. So they have the luxury of the 20. They use it now, and now they are left with one full timeout, as are the Detroit Pistons. We're going to take a look at Michael Jordan. Now, you see Dumars was on top of him, Rodman on the bottom. They were trying to swing him off this baseline pick to bring him to the ball side. But because Pippen was standing right in front of us, he never looked down to that left corner, and Jordan definitely was open. The Chicago Bulls have scored on their last five possessions. Michael Jordan getting three of those points. Horace Grant, three of those baskets. Horace Grant, two of those hoops. The offensive rebound and the two big free throws to tie the game. Remember, NBA game, you cannot throw the ball in the backcourt. And because of the size of these guys, they cut down the passing angles. Pippen finds Jordan. There it is. Rodman is on him one-on-one. -on -one. Five seconds to go. Jordan off the glass. Yes! Three seconds to go, and Detroit has one more chance at it. the Chicago Bulls have their first lead since their only lead in the game at 31 to 29. Now here we have another look at this very very close. Now you'll see the second defensive player come to the left of your screen here now for the double team. There's the elevation. But how about the movement in the body? Three seconds remain in the game and the Pistons have used up their last timeout. Here it is from another angle. 46 points for Michael Jordan as the Bulls have their first lead since early in the second quarter at 31 to 29. 
Jordan has 17 points in this last quarter, including 12 of their last 16. Grant got the other four. So now Detroit with the offense. Thomas has not been a factor of the offense. How does Chicago play them defensively, Hubie? Well, it, you know, it, once again, I say it comes down to whether you're going to guard this guy out of bounds or not. We saw with three seconds in a ball game, Chicago score when they played Cleveland. And we saw Cleveland score from out of bounds within a three-second count. Now, they're using Dumars, and you know that if they throw in, they can go right back to him. He's having a great game today. Benny Johnson is in as well. He has had a great game with 19 for the Pistons. You must switch all the way around. They don't have the luxury of a timeout. There Dumars for three, goes for the winner. It's over. Chicago wins. The Chicago Bulls have still never trailed in any series in the playoffs. They take a two to one lead. They came from 14 points behind to win it, scoring on their last six possessions. And the great hero, of course, who else? Michael Jordan.